All right, I think this is working. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Cameron Kinker. Um, I am super excited to be here today uh, for all of you, although I'm recording this uh, a week or so early. Um, I hope that everyone is having a wonderful July so far. Um, again, as I said, my name is Cameron Kinker. Um, I work, I've been working at Prevention Access Campaign now for over two years, managing programs, communications, and community engagement. Um, and I'm really excited to be here with you all today to talk a lot about U equals U, or undetectable equals untransmittable. Uh, first, I wanna thank, of course, Health HIV for putting together this event. Um, I know that we were supposed to be together in person back in March, but I know now, obviously, we are in quite a different world. Um, and I wanna also thank Michelle, of course, for organizing all of this um, and making this a reality in our new COVID world. Um, so without further ado, I will get started with just a little bit of a song from one of our community partners in Uganda who has written um, a number of songs about U equals U, but I always like to start off with a little bit of a ditty. I celebrate love because you equals you. I take my medication. You equals you. Economy is grow and shine. You equals you. I smile and sing and dance because you equals you. And then I'll start also, uh, two years ago, actually, uh, now our partners in the Netherlands put together this, I think, really moving video, which I think is a great introduction to U equals U during the 2018 uh, International AIDS Conference that happened in Amsterdam. You equals you is important to me because I can have a relationship, I can have children, and also build on my future. You equals you is important because we can give people hope. When they came to the clinic, they are not afraid that much because they know that if they take a treatment, they can live like anyone else. The reason why I'm gonna join the match is that I want to dismantle stigma among people living with HIV and promoting U equals U so that everyone can understand the real meaning of it. U equals U message is important for me. It's because this is the scientific fact and this fact should be shot out through the crowds. And also I believe that separating this message to every society, every people in the world will give us the strength to fight with the epidemic. The U equals U message is so important for me because it's such a strong, powerful, empowering message. If you are undetectable, you cannot transmit the virus anymore to another person. It's such a liberating message and I want to bring that message all around the world. Everybody has to know about this message. Great. So um, this is a little brief outline of kind of uh, what we'll go over today during this presentation. Um, obviously, I'll start with making sure that we all have a foundational understanding of what U equals U is. Uh, I'll go into a little bit about the campaign and the history, uh, including some information about how the U.S. government has endorsed and supported the campaign um, and helped give us some of the, uh, you know, institutional backing that we've been able to uh, use to grow this campaign to a really global movement. Um, we'll then go into some tips about communicating U equals U and how to make sure that we're messaging it appropriately and responsibly. I'll give you some examples um, of the U equals U campaign worldwide and in the U.S. I think it's always really helpful to have examples of how people are sharing this message in different ways and I hope it's also inspiring to you all. Um, and then I'll end uh, on a discussion of how we can incorporate U equals U more so into all of our work in the HIV epidemic um, in the US. And of course, we'll be, I'll be joining, I guess, in a week from now uh, or today for you all uh, for a Q&A at the end. And throughout all of this as well, I'll be making um, references and notes to point out some specific things that I think are really helpful when you're messaging U equals U, specifically around adherence, because I know that this is one of those topic, one of the topics that um, I've been asked to discuss today. So first, what is U equals U? Uh, it stands for undetectable equals untransmittable. People living with HIV who are on treatment and have an undetectable viral load cannot transmit HIV to sexual partners. 
Uh, I always also like to start uh, in, especially, um, you know, presentations like this, where we have the opportunity to go in a little bit more in depth to actually show some of the science behind um, U equals U. I, there have been studies, of course, going back to the mid to late 90s around uh, treatment as prevention around maternal uh, to child transmission. Um, about how treatment would impact the rate with which HIV is transmitted um, through different mechanisms. But around sexual transmission, a lot of these studies are of course um, more recent. Um, and these are the four main ones that we've been able to um, build a scientific consensus about U equals U on. Um, HPTN052, partners one and two, as well as opposites attract. Um, in all of these studies, what the biggest takeaway for me is that there were absolutely zero uh, linked transmissions where a person who um, was undetectable um, passed on HIV to their sexual partners. There was no linked transmissions where um, when that person was virally suppressed that there was a transmission that occurred. There were some people that um, seroconverted uh, in those studies, but they were not they, uh, they did not acquire HIV from the partner that was undetectable. It was from a sexual contact outside of that relationship. Um, and in all of these studies put together, we have been demonstrated that there's uh, there have been over 144,000 uh, sexual acts without condoms um, uh, between those four um, studies. And as I said, again, there was zero phylogenetic phylogenetically linked uh, trans uh, transmissions when the HIV positive partner was uh, virally suppressed and stably so as well. Um, so this is a little bit of the backing. And again, I'm happy to answer more questions about this during the Q&A um, and also to um, share a lot of this information, which is, can also all be found on our website. Why do we think U equals U as a game changer? Of course, we know the science, but why does this actually impact people and what does it mean in their lives? We really believe that U equals U transforms the social, sexual, and reproductive lives of people living with HIV, and it, it frees them from the shame and fear of transmitting HIV, um, which is a really amazing thing when people can uh, feel like they can be more intimate in their partners. They can go on dates for the first time without having this in the back of their mind in the same way. They can conceive children without the fear of passing it on. We know that it dismantles stigma in a really important way as well. There's so much societal baggage around the fear of HIV. And I think what this really does is it not only provides an opportunity to educate any, uh, any person really about what it really means to live with HIV today, but it takes a lot of that fear out of the question. We know it also reduces anxiety associated with HIV testing um, and it adds an incentive to start and stay on treatment and to stay in care um, and stay healthy. We know that there's so many barriers to ending the epidemic, right? But U equals U, I think, really uniquely can touch all of them because if you're messaging this information out front to people that um, are maybe looking to get tested or you want to you know, reach out to to get tested, sharing this information, again, makes this something less scary and provides an opportunity to educate that people living with HIV can live long, healthy lives, lives and not worry about passing it on to their partners. Um, it also, if you're messaging this in the right way, of course, I'll go much more into this in a little bit. Um, it provides that extra added incentive for a person to start and stay on their treatment. Um, and again, we'll go into more about how to communicate that shortly. And lastly, this is really critical, especially as we're messaging um, to policymakers and folks who are in positions of power is that we really believe that U equals U provides a strong public health benefit, uh, an argument for increased access uh, and removing of barriers to treatment and care. In, a per in an ideal theoretical world, right, you would, if you were to get every single person onto treatment and adhere to that treatment, you would no longer have any HIV transmission. Of course, we know that there's a lot of people who are not diagnosed or uh, virally suppressed, but if you use this argument to say, hey, if we invest in the people living with HIV and their health, look what we can do possibly together. Um, so I'll go in more into this now. We, the way that we really break this down is a twofold argument, right? Increasing access and removing barriers to care. First, you improve the um, well-being of people living with HIV, so their personal health, right? That allows them to live longer, healthier lives. It generally, you know, it is a personal health benefit for that individual person, which we all know as people who believe in, in uh, health and human rights is should be enough in a perfect world to um, be enough for us to want to invest in the health care of people living with HIV. But if we can also say it has a public health benefit of ending and eliminating new HIV transmissions, 
you get a dual benefit of, of advocating for that universal care, right? If we can get as many people living with HIV healthy and prioritize their health, a, an amazing side effect is that they don't, they no longer pass on HIV and therefore we get on the epidemic. So we say increasing access and removing barriers, not just increasing access because we know that you can have all the access in the world but if you aren't also removing some of those barriers to accessing the care, whether it's racism, uh, systemic uh, inequity, um, you know, intimate partner violence, et cetera. Those types of barriers alongside increasing access, not everyone's gonna be able to actually reach undetectable. Um, so again, if you remove those barriers, increase access, you improve the well-being of people living with HIV and their personal health, prevents new transmissions, public health, and the epidemic, right? So we see this as kind of a whole ecosystem of investment um, and care. Uh, and again, this is just another way to, 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 to view it. This is really important, especially as we're going to people that are, are um, you know, allocating dollars for healthcare access. If we can use this argument to say, hey, we don't just need treatment to save people's lives anymore, but we need treatment as a core tool to actually end the epidemic, um, we think that um, U equals U can be a really critical part in that conversation around how to end the epidemic. And again, yeah, number one, improving access to removing barriers to treatment care and, access, care and services, improves the well-being of people living with HIV, and eliminates new HIV transmissions. So sorry to <laughs> bang this over your, over your head, but again, we think this is, is really mission critical for our work um, as an organization as we're um, thinking about how we um, are lobbying and, and advocating for certain policies, but also as you know, public health advocates, how can we be strategic around using this new information and science to, to argue for the health and well-being of people living with HIV and of course, and the, and the epidemic. So now I'll start a little bit about the history of the U equals U campaign and where we have come from, um, which we think is, I mean, history, right? So in 1996, we finally got to a point where we knew that treatment um, was saving people's lives, that we were no longer seeing um, the, you know, massive amount of side effects from certain medications, but that also we were seeing that people could live normal, healthy lives if they were on treatment. Um, and of course, we've come a long way since, since 1996 um, as far as those specific treatment modalities. But we've also gotten to a point where now in 2016, we know that that same treatment allows people to no longer have to worry about ever passing it on to their partners. But that's a long 20 year period. It took a long time to get to that point where we can say this definitively. Um, and this, again, this was in 2016 when the campaign launched um, uh, as kind of a benchmark for, as a date for how long this campaign has been around. It's been only about four years. So why do we need the U equals U campaign? We know that there's generally a lack of access to accurate information. Um, we need to democratize and allow access to the types of information, especially health information. Everyone has the right to, to their own, to information about their own social, sexual, and reproductive health at the, at the end of the day, right? We also know that there's a lack of expertise, authority, or disposition to draw a conclusion on the aggregate of research, especially when a conclusion like saying you can no longer transmit to your sexual partners is something that people view as pretty radical. Um, people don't necessarily want to take that, that risk and aggregate all the science and say, hey, look, maybe we actually can say this now, right? Um, so that definitely took, that was the reason why it took a while to get to where we are now. But there's also a lot of, in this field, paternalism and bias, prejudice and stigma. Um, the people that are living with HIV or are affected by HIV are often not don't look like the people that are um, at the research institutions that are at the um, NIH, for example, that are, you know, doing this research and aggregating this information and people, I'll go into this um, a little bit later, obviously, but people were worried that sharing this information um, would lead to um, risk compensation or people, um, you know, thinking it was a it mean, meant they were cured, so they would stop taking their medication. So there's all this paternalism of, oh, we don't think that people living with HIV can handle this information, which we of course know um, is not a, a good public health strategy. And also just resistance to change, right? It, it can take a long time to convince people um, that something is true when you, when it's in, you know, 
beaten into your head for 20 plus years that HIV is this thing to be feared and that you have to do everything in your power to prevent the transmission with condoms or abstinence or all these other sorts of interventions um, and to a, get to a point where you can say, oh, actually, scientifically, you don't need condoms to prevent HIV transmission. Um, it, it can be a pretty big mind shift for some people. So of course, there is resistance to change. But also scientists doesn't have, a pub, science doesn't have a publicist, right? There's no one organization or body that's like making sure that the science that's being published in all these journals um, is getting out to people in uh, easy to understand, succinct, um, and uh, easily accessible ways. And I think we're seeing this right now with COVID with just the amount of misinformation out there and confusion, especially early on when there was this like massive rush to try to understand what we can do to to stop COVID or coronavirus transmission. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're seeing all of these types of things um, have similar ramifications in the, the COVID pandemic. Um, essentially, what we, uh, you know, understand is this campaign was necessary because we know that all people with HIV have a right to accurate information about their social, sexual, and reproductive health, as I said so, as I said earlier. We just fundamentally believe this is a human right. Um, people need to know about their bodies and what they can do to keep themselves and the people around them healthy. We also know that HIV stigma is a public health emergency, right? Um, people are, you know, having horrible mental health outcomes, people are committing suicide, um, experiencing depression, anxiety, all these types of things that are public health problems, right? And we really view that U equals U as an immediate and effective public health solution. Essentially, our slogan is tell the truth or we'll tell it for you. We knew that this information was not being shared with people um, and that there had been studies going back you know, there, in 2008 was the first um, was the first published paper called the Swiss Statement, um, where this information was being basically shared with people. But it took another eight years for this campaign to to really um, take hold because of all of the reasons that I listed earlier. And we're here, um, marching to the beach of our own drum, and making sure that everyone living with HIV um, and and of course the general public as well needs to know those information. So tell the truth or we'll tell it for you. So how do we bring the science to the people essentially? So these uh, four white men are some of the leading scientists who authored uh, a number of the uh, studies that I mentioned earlier that basically uh, allowed us to say U equals U, right? They were, they were the authors that proved that there was no linked transmissions when someone was virally suppressed. But the science wasn't getting out to people, right? So what we did was we brought these four amazing folks together and said, hey, we really need to come up with a way to actually share this information with people living with HIV because we right, know right now it's not getting out to folks. They were shocked, right? They thought that, you know, they're, of course, doing their own important work. They're putting it out. They didn't realize that the science was not being communicated uh, to the general public or to the people that it most impacts. Uh, so what we did was we brought together all of, again, these researchers, community advocates, um, folks in the HIV field together to come up with this consensus statement in the summer of 2016, um, endorsed by those scientists, as well as a number of other folks, um, saying that U equals U is true, here's the proof, and this is why we urgently need to communicate this information to everyone right now. We created an advocacy video where we brought together community members to help share the information with folks in the HIV community uh, in the United States and beyond. Uh, we And finally, in July of 2016, we had some of our first partner organizations sign on and endorse this campaign. Uh, first, we had the New York City Department of Health um, with Dimitri Daskalakis, uh, who at the time uh, was spearheading their HIV efforts. Um, he took the brave step uh, and is a true hero and was the first uh, got the New York City Department of Health to be the first health department in the world to sign on and agree that undetectable equals untransmittable. Very shortly thereafter, Terence Higgins Trust in the United Kingdom signed on. Um, and then we've also now been able to get um, HHS and all of the, a number of, or, of, uh, of folks in the federal government to basically say, yes, this is true. Um, we, in 2017, essentially got to a point where we were able to say, um, 
we need to clarify this science, right? We worked with CDC folks at NIH over the course of 2016 and 2017 to work um, on how to communicate the science as well. Um, we demanded that the CDC update uh, their, uh, their definition of risk from people living with HIV in their bodies. Uh, we demanded that they follow the science, no matter how radical it was. Again, this was huge, a huge risk for some people to feel like they like saying this information, right? Even though we know it's irrefutably true, it was still a big leap for them to be able to jump out and say this information. Um, but We've worked really closely with the folks of the federal government over the past four years um, to work around all of these uh, the ways to communicate U equals U, and um, we're really proud of our relationships both at NIH and CDC, um, who have helped us, um, you know, help communicate this information to everyone along the way. Um, and now, uh, you know, U equals U has been spread like wildfire all over the world. Um, this is just a slide of a bunch of photos. We see um, nurses in Kazakhstan on the top right who went out in the uh, freezing cold. It translates to what looks like H equals H there, but I know it's pronounced a little bit differently. Australia, Nepal, Japan, Norway, they had an O equals O bus in Norway, um, in Spain, Ivory Coast, Guatemala. Um, and again, I'll show some more examples um, in a little bit. Of, of these campaigns in different parts of the world. But again, this just was, there was a hunger, I think, of people living with HIV to reclaim their agency and say, hey, I am going to share this information with my community because I think it's really important uh, for people to know that as someone living with HIV, I am not a risk to you. Um, in 2017, in the summer, uh, we had dance parties uh, and marches all over the world. Um, so again, it really has exploded. And we've gotten to the point today where we are currently uh, have over 990 partners from 101 countries all over the world. Um, so we're very, very close to 1,000. Um, maybe by the time that we have our Q&A, we'll have surpassed that number. I think we're at 992 as of today, which is July 5th, uh, or July 6th, sorry. Um, but yeah, so it's just been really amazing to see, especially since I've joined the campaign in the past two years, um, how, how far we've grown and come um, and to see the way that this message is being adapted um, and communicated all over the world. Um, something that we've worked really hard as well here in the United States is to reach out to our number of um, state and local health departments to um, ask them to sign on to the campaign, to develop their own campaigns, to provide feedback on their campaigns. Um, so right now we have 21 um, state health departments um, and 31 plus uh, municipalities. Just last week, Florida, the Florida Department of Health signed on, which is really exciting. Um, and that includes their 67 counties and all of the health departments individually there. Obviously, every um, state has their own processes um, and you know, kind of ways about going things, but we're really grateful for the 21 states that we um, have been able to partner with um, to help communicate this message. And again, I'll go into some examples of different campaigns, um, but essentially when, when any organization or health department signs on, we're there for, as a resource for them as they're looking about how to Im implement this information into their programming and come up with campaigns, um, et cetera. We kind of view ourselves as a, as a clearing house of, of all that information. So as I said, we worked really closely with the folks at CDC to um, update the risk language. Um, in 2017, in September, uh, was when the CDC came out and formally said there was effectively no risk of sexual transmission when on treatment and undetectable. We'll go into a little bit more about, um, about how to communicate U equals U um, and uh, kind of talk about the word effectively. But we also had in the summer of 2019, actually just about a year ago this week, um, the CDC came out with uh, new risk assessments um, for treatment and prevention, um, to which they said that um, being virally suppressed is 100% effective at preventing sexual transmission when someone is undetectable. Um, they've also um, authorized uh, flexibility in messaging. Uh, in 2019, there was a Dear Colleague letter that Dr. Eugene McRae sent out to all of the um, CDC grantees, authorizing use of U equals U as well as any communications that Prevention Access Campaign puts out. So that was a really huge win for us because we know that 
something that's really important in, in communicating health information is that one singular message is not going to work for every community. And we need to provide the flexibility for different um, communities and organizations and localities to figure out ways to communicate the science behind U equals U or what U equals U really essentially means in ways that works for their communities, right? So this, this uh, letter f authorizing the flexibility in that messaging was a huge win for us. Um, and yeah, this is the um, some from HRSA. Uh, we had some dear colleague letters as well. HRSA um, in 2018 put out a, a, a dear colleague letter to all um, Ryan White, HIV uh, AIDS program colleagues. Perhaps you saw this in 2018, it was in October. Um, so HRSA has also been a great partner for us as well. Uh, we've also had a huge friend in Dr. Fauci, uh, which uh, as he's gotten much more public attention um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, just being able to reflect on all of the things that he's done for the campaign has been really um, inspiring for, for me, but also for everyone at PAC. Um, in uh, last summer at the International AIDS Society uh, meeting in Mexico City, he was on video and said that U equals U is the foundation of being able to end the epidemic. Um, and he's been a, a great advocate for, for U equals U since basically the beginning. So um, huge shout out and, and many, many, many thanks to Dr. Fauci. Uh, in 2019 as well, um, Health and Human Services released updated treatment guidelines um, where they basically included U equals U in their treatment guidelines to communicate uh, to patients. So. That was a, this was a huge win for us as well because one of the biggest problems we've seen in, in a lot of the research that uh, has been going on is that doctors aren't always communicating this to their patients um, or providers aren't always communicating it. So having it um, included in the treatment guidelines that this is something that needs to be shared with uh, people living with HIV uh, is incredibly important. Uh, on that note, uh, there's been a number of, uh, of studies about people people's understanding of U equals U adopting of the message, belief in the message, et cetera, um, which I'm happy to, again, share with you all and talk more about in the Q&A, but I wanted to highlight um, two studies here briefly that I think are, are representative of kind of where we are now uh, with the research on U equals U. Um, this study came out at CROI back in March, uh, just before we were supposed to all get together, actually. Um, that was, it's one of the first um, studies that actually shows that there was, um, there was basically community level um, decrease in transmission due to people being undetectable. Um, so it really points out that um, even before PrEP, that U equals U is a public health strategy to basically decrease new transmissions in a significant way. Um, so this is really helpful, helpful for us, especially with that public health argument, where we're saying, hey, communicating this message and relying on the science of not being able to pass it on when you're undetectable, actually can get us to clo closer to ending the epidemic. Um, another research uh, uh, study that I, I think is really important um, is our friends over at The Well Project, which is an am amazing resource. If you don't um, know about The Well Project, I'd highly encourage you to check out their website. They have amazing, amazing resources for women living with HIV. Um, they did a study um, last year of, of uh, 239 uh, people, li women living with HIV across the United States. Um, and the results, I think, really showed that the impact of U equals U is, is significant on people's lives. 72% said that U equals U had a significant or tremendously positive impact on their lives, which is wonderful. Um, most were familiar with it, um, but only but fewer than half of people had heard it from their providers. The, stu the statistic is that 64% had not heard about it from their healthcare providers. So that's, I think, where obviously the work that we're doing today comes in is how do we make sure that we're sharing this information in responsible ways? Um, how do we make sure that we are getting this information to the people that are most impacted by it? Uh, last year, um, as well, there was an article in The Lancet written by Sarah Calabrese and Dr. Kenneth Mayer um, in The Lancet, uh, who uh, talked about this exact problem of communicating it to providers. They said it, quote, is inexcusable for providers to withhold the U, U equals U message, excuse me, from any patient living with HIV. Conveying benefits and risks surrounding any treatment is fundamental to a patient's decision making, and this HIV treatment benefit should be no exception. 
Educating about U equals U is crucial to maximizing the well-being of people living with HIV and to minimizing the contribution of provider biases to HIV-related disparities. So essentially really focusing on also making sure that we're sharing this information equitably with all people living with HIV, not we're, that we're not cherry-picking who we think um, you know, deserves in, this information or not. Um, some provider consequences that we try to emphasize as well that, you know, we really think that telling someone that they're infectious when they're not is um, unethical and harmful. And I'm using infectious here, which we very er rarely ever do um, in public setting, but here for um, kind of dramatic effect that that word is really terrifying to some people and can be really stigmatizing. Um, and that same with that feeling, right? So we need to make sure that we're communicating to people that um, their actual their actual risk, right? Um, that it's malpractice to withhold or deny life-changing information to people with HIV that's science-based and accepted in the field. We know also that patients are finding out about U equals U elsewhere. Just in that Well Project study that I referenced, 64% said they uh, had not heard it from a patient or from a provider, but as patients, over 85% of them were really familiar with U equals U. So there's clearly a, a disparity there that people are finding out about this information. Regardless, but we don't want that to become um, something that breaks trust between a provider and, and, and their patient. Um, we also want to maximize the opportunities to improve public and personal health, right? And we view this again as a really crucial way that we can um, do that. So again, just some food for thought. I think we'll obviously have more time to chat about this in the Q&A if we want, um, but just some really important things to think about. Um, conquering fear and anxiety, I think, is also really important, especially when you're, you know, messaging about adherence, for example. Sometimes people, um, when they're learning this information, they don't always want to believe it right away, right? It it's, can be shocking, it can be new information, it can be a lot to digest, especially if they're a long-term survivor or, you know, didn't know this information before. Their first question might be, why didn't I know this, etc. Um, so I think it's really important to recognize that cognitive dissonance. Um, and I think trying to, uh, you know, reduce the tension between old ways and new ways of thinking um, by maybe referencing some of the data that I talked about, about those four foundational studies that prove U equals U, figuring out where their kind of um, apprehensions are coming from and working with that person to figure that out, I think is really important. I think separating feelings from facts as well is really critical. Um, it's important to realize when subjective um, fears and anxiety are overriding uh, the data that confirms U equals U, um, whether that's with the patient or maybe with a colleague as well, who might be um, a little bit more apprehensive to share this information. I think also considering the impacts is really important. Uh, when we're conveying a message, um, we need to consider the real world impact that words and attitudes can destroy or transform lives. So how are we um, being intentional with the information we're choosing or not choosing to share with people? Um, and lastly, we always say that because this can be new information for a lot of folks and can be hard or challenging to digest or wrap your head around, borrow confidence from the experts. If you have Dr. Fauci saying U equals U is the foundation of being able to end the epidemic and there is zero risk of transmission when someone's undetectable, hopefully we can borrow some confidence from someone like him. Um, a lot of patients also obviously will think about immediately uh, when learning this information about how this impacts their uh, ability to share their status, right? Um, I'm not going to go super in depth into kind of all of the uh, questions around criminalization and disclosure, but I think, um, you know, it's really important to just think about the, you know, ethical um, part of sharing your status to someone if you're living with HIV. What's my personal responsibility to be honest and transparent with my partners? Um, what type of relationship am I in? Is it safe for me to share this information? Um, am I gonna put myself at personal risk if I do? Um, is this person close enough with me that they, I think that they deserve to know this information? Um, I think those are all important considerations. And then lastly, the, of course, the legal considerations. What are the laws in each state? And making sure that your patients are familiar with what those um, those uh, certain legal requirements are to share that information if they are um, living with HIV and in a state where, where um, it is criminalized. And also criminalization we know is uh, generally not good for public health. 
So um, just some basics as well about U equals U that I think is really important to emphasize. Uh, the basics are TLC, treatment, labs, and connection. Um, we know that uh, when you're communicating U equals U, you want some, some th good tidbits to kind of distill this. And I think these are great, um, great tools here to, to share the information. So it's about treatment, taking your meds every day, making sure you have a routine for that, how to support people to make sure they're adherent, um, getting your labs done every six months or a year, depending on, of course, the person, uh, making sure that they're having patient follow-up um, and getting to the doctor's office, and then connection to care, of course, to stay connected to care. Some, um, again, some rules to make sure that we're being accurate with how we're sharing this. Um, U equals U, um, the what is undetectable, of course, has changed over the years as viral load testing has gotten more and more sensitive. So uh, some machines may be as sensitive as below 20 even, some are around 100. Um, there's some, of course, that are measuring even higher. What we know from the, the studies that I mentioned is that U equals U is synonymous um, with uh, 200, less than 200 copies per milliliter, which means they're virally suppressed. So when you think of the undetectable component of U equals U, it's just below 200. So uh, I, there's some people that you know will get concerned if there's a small viral blip, for example, but um, we have not seen that viral blips are a problem for maintaining uh, the, validity, the validity and durability of U equals U, um, and that just 200 is the, is the cutoff. Um, we always emphasize that U equals U is about sex, not breastfeeding or needle sharing. Of course, if you're undetectable, the risk of transmitting through breast milk or through IV drug use is dramatically decreased, but we can't say it is 100% effective like we can with sex. Of course, U equals U only prevents HIV, not other STIs, so make sure that um, we're emphasizing that there's condoms and other forms of protection to prevent other STDs or STIs. Again, HIV disclosure laws are always important to consider. U equals U may not be an exception. Um, and lastly, we'll go, I'll go more into this in a minute. Viral load does not equal value. If someone can't get to undetectable, that is okay. Um, we just want to make sure that we're prioritizing them as a person and their health um, and not trying to, um, you know, make, make them feel bad for not getting undetectable. Of course, it's not a personal failure. It's a, it's a personal choice to, get unde to be undetectable. So now we'll go into some communication tips. Um, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Sorry, I'm used to like having more banter back and forth. So it's a lot of my own talking. Um, so really the four kind of C's that we talk about when communicating U equals U, we wanna be clear, confident, consistent, and conscious. So what does that mean? We have to be clear about U equals U, right? Um, the way that we're describing risk um, is, can have a really significant impact on people and we need to make sure that people are sharing this information um, in ways that are clear, concise, again, and also instill confidence, right? The le words on the left, um, negligible, extremely unlikely, virtually impossible, close to zero, helps prevent, it all implies that there is still a little bit of risk. And we can say definitively now that there is zero risk when a person is undetectable, right? So saying can't pass it on, can't transmit, no risk, zero risk, um, prevents are clear and concise um, and really, again, instill the fact that there is no longer any chance of passing it on when you're undetectable. We don't want to imply that there's any sort of like possibly maybe because then that's going to be the doubt that's in someone's mind, the what if, right? So we want to, again, instill that confidence. We don't want to say things like, oh, I believe in U equals U, but use a condom or PrEP just in case. What we can say instead is condoms or PrEP aren't clinically necessary to prevent HIV with U equals U, but those are also really great options and really important. You can use condoms and, and or PrEP to, um, you know, for lots of other reasons, right? Whether you want to prevent STDs or pregnancy, condoms are perfect for that. Um, if you partner living with HIV is maybe struggling with a little bit of adherence. PrEP might be a great option for that other person in that relationship. Um, if you're having condomless sex with partners of unknown HIV status, PrEP and condoms are great for those as well. But also if someone wants to just be on PrEP uh, and their partner's undetectable because it just adds for them both together a f an extra feeling of security and agency, there's nothing wrong with that, right? We want people to have 
as many options at their disposal um, to feel happy, safe, and healthy in their in their relationships. And I think messaging that you equals you is one part of the prevention toolbox is really critical um, to making sure that we're destigmatizing prep use, con all sorts of things, right? We want to be open and honest about the way that we're talking about sexual health in general. Um, we hear this a lot. Sometimes people will say, oh, you're only as good as your last viral test. Um, you know, people will think, of, you know, they'll jump to like different types of things that might make them worried, like viral blips or, or you know, what if someone stops taking their meds for a day or two? But if you're taking your medication as prescribed and having a regular viral load test, you don't need to worry. You know, we need to make sure that we're, we're being optimistic and empowering with our messaging. Don't say you never know. We do know. This has been proven with hundreds of thousands of condom of sex acts across like thousands of partner years. We can say confidently that we do know that you equals you. Um, we also know that, like I said earlier, this is sometimes new information for a lot of people. People need to see, hear, and practice saying this repeatedly to accept it and believe it. Um, integrate it into all your information, guidelines, clinic, clinical rooms, outreach activities. Um, have a conversation about U equals U with those that are living with or vulnerable to HIV at every opportunity. And using social media and traditional media to convey the message is really helpful as well. Again, we also need to be mindful of the, the structural, social, and economic, or emotional barriers that make it hard for people to get to undetectable, right? Not everyone's able to achieve and maintain an undetectable viral load. Um, all people living with HIV have options for safer sex with condoms or PrEP for the uh, negative partner. We have to acknowledge that it's a personal decision and support those on treatment to maintain maximum adherence. And again, use that public health argument, like I said earlier, to address the barriers to universal access, right? Especially when we're thinking of this through a racial justice framework, who are the people that are most often being left out of these conversations, are not able to access um, you know, treatment, aren't able to maintain adherence, all sorts of things, right? So we need to make sure that we're being really responsible and intentional about um, not equating value or undetectability um, with, uh, with a higher value, essentially. So now I'll go through some fun examples of campaigns across the world. I know I have a little bit over 15 minutes left, so I think we're perfectly on time. Um, these, I think, hopefully will just provide some fun, um, inspiring examples of how this information is being communicated in other parts of the world and then also in the country. Um, these are a bunch of campaigns that have been going on for the past about two years or so um, in the United Kingdom, which um, us at PAC, we call the UK the, the Disney World for U equals U just because of how many organizations are all united in their commitment to sharing this information with people across the country. Um, I saw some data today that 97% of people living with HIV in the UK are on treatment and 97% of those are virally suppressed. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's inspiring to see the ways that they have used this message and those efforts um, and all the different types of campaigns they've seen. Can't Pass It On is the signature campaign from Terrence Higgins Trust. Um, and they don't even say U equals U, right? That's, I think, one great example of how an organization is communicating this exact same message, but in ways that work for them, right? That was a, a slogan that they um, determined was, um, you know, worked for their folks. And we actually connected THT with folks in Canada um, and there is now a Canadian Can't Pass It On campaign that was run by um, Katie, an organization up there, which I think is really inspiring. Um, this is a campaign um, uh, on the left from Venezuela, from the um, Maori people, um, which are indigenous folks in Venezuela who are sharing U equals U, called Aika's I there, Warao, I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, and I just think it shows that there's so many different settings, even where treatment access might be really challenging, that people still find this inspiring and helpful in their in their own advocacy. Um, M Coalition is an organization based in um, Lebanon. They shared this video last year, um, sharing U equals U in Arabic. Um, these are some high profile celebrities who have shared U equals U. Uh, Prince Harry on the top left. Uh, last year in the UK, a um, his name is Gareth Thomas. He is a rugby player who came out as HIV. Um, Pete Buttigieg, during one of the presidential debates, talked about U equals U. Jonathan Ben Ness did. Um, so that was really exciting to see. Um, in uh, Zambia, they...
they came up with their own music video as a PEPFAR program. They had their minister, their president actually sign on to the U equals U campaign. So they're sharing it there. Vietnam has one of the most amazing campaigns, K equals K in, in Vietnamese. Um, but the folks from the CDC um, in Hanoi uh, developed this along with um, a number of local partners in Vietnam. Um, DMP Plus, the people living with HIV there, um, and a number of LGBT organizations to just have a really beautiful um, campaign. And I think uh, it's been very successful there and um, really inspiring to see. Um, on the left is a campaign from Ireland, the Ireland Health Services. Say They say effective treatment means you can't pass on HIV to others, U equals U. On the right was a graphic developed by PEPFAR in Nigeria this past winter. If you're undetectable, you're keeping yourself healthy and do not transmit HIV through sex. Um, this is in Japan. There have been U equals U dance parties here. There's been um, bands that have come up with their own um, songs. Yeah, so just lots of fun ways they've been sharing it in, U in Japan too. Um, I would love to go to a dance party <laughs> now. It's been a while. Um, hopefully post COVID we can go and have more of those. Um, in Mauritius, these women marched, um, they printed out um, graphics developed by the International AIDS Society and Saving Lives in the UK um, and printed it out for their own candlelight vigil. They had an HIV candlelight vigil there and brought those, which just shows the global sharing of this information. New Zealand has really fun campaigns. Their campaign was called Drop Your Load, um, which I think is <laughs> obviously a double entendre. Um, they had a drag queen talk about U equals U named Courtney Act. Um, and lots of other creative ways to get uh, the message out, including um, rags that they handed out um, at bathhouses in cities. So again, fun different ways to communicate sexual health messaging. Um, yeah. um, in Washington, DC, close to where you all are, obviously, um, or where you are actually currently, um, we have seen the DC Department of Health um, have really amazing messaging and campaigns around U equals U. Michael Carfin has been a great friend of the campaign since the beginning. Um, they were they had the first bus campaign uh, in the country about U equals U, the one on the bottom left, um, and they actually relaunched their campaign um, at the beginning of the year this year, um, which uh, you can see here, obviously, really, really great. New York State and City um, have had a number of campaigns um, on subways, billboards all over the state, um, videos that were ads all over Twitter, last Pride, um, at World's World Pride in New York City in 2019. So, and they went totally um, all out with their advertising on um, social media and on subways. It was really amazing to see. Baltimore, um, the Baltimore City Health Department um, has a really amazing campaign um, called um, U equals U Maryland. So if you go to U equals U Maryland.org, so spelled out U E Q U A L S U Maryland.org, they have lots of these graphics you can download. They have all sorts of resources, which is really awesome. They have one of the more built out campaigns in the country. Oregon Health Authority has an awesome uh, campaign. Um, Equitas Health, which is a, an FQHC that has a number of clinics across Ohio, um, they developed their own campaign in 2019. Um, that was really community driven um, and I think has been really successful. They even put it on billboards, on highways and stuff. So that was really exciting to see. Um, and just again, these are all different ways to communicate it to folks. Um, this was developed by the Santa Clara uh, Department of Health in Cal Santa Clara County in California. So kind of Silicon Valley, San Jose area. Um, they had it, of course, in Spanish and English. Um, HIV medication makes the virus undetectable. Undetectable means it can't be transmitted. Uh, in Phoenix, there is um, the Aunt Rita's, which is the foundation that's the beneficiary of their AIDS block in Phoenix. They um, put this on the side of the trams in Phoenix and said, they called it Hiv Hiv Hooray. Treatment lets you be you without spreading HIV, which I think is super cute. Um, Broward and Miami counties, um, they uh, care resource center down there developed this campaign um, back in the fall um, or in the winter, it was late winter, uh, 2019. Uh, taking your HIV medication daily suppresses the virus. Once undetectable, you cannot sexually transmit the virus to your partners. 
the Institutes for Family Health in New York City, um, they have these, these ads basically on screens in their waiting rooms where they would be on kind of a loop to play for patients. Um, and then also on paper posters in, um, in patient rooms. So there was just other ways to, to get the word out there. And it was of course in different languages. And this is our own campaign actually, um, along with Vive back in 2018 and 19, we developed our own campaign because we were rec we had recognized that not everyone has the resources and ability to come up with their own, um, your own campaign to share this information with folks. So we developed positiveseries.org where folks can go on there, they can customize the language, they can add their own logos to these posters, they can download videos and GIFs, they feature the stories of four people living with HIV, um, and how they basically learned U equals U and how it, it changed their lives. And it really also emphasizes um, encouraging engagement and care and adherence, which is really important. So I encourage you all to check that out. And lastly, with the last 10 minutes or so of my time, um, I want to just emphasize a few ways that you can include U equals U into any sorts of planning or work going along with um, ending the HIV epidemic more broadly, right? Um, we know that integrating U equals U messaging into the EHE plans is something that we're personally working on, but if you ever are any, in any sort of meetings or have the ability to influence what those plans or NOFOs or um, that work is looking like, make sure that there's an explicit like shout out or inclusion of U equals U in that. Um, it can kind of sometimes be just like lumped underneath the treatment kind of bucket of things, but we find that because the U equals U touches on so many different aspects of the treatment cascade, we really want it to be deliberately shouted out in those plans. Um, like the second point here also, including it in messaging with testing, prep, PEP, condom campaigns, like yeah, this toolbox of prevention that we have, U equals U needs to be a part of that conversation as well. Um, you all are fulfilling number three right now. Um, obviously conducting provider trainings or case manager trainings on U equals U um, and how to kind of communicate this message is really important, but also we don't want to be and shouldn't be the only people that are doing those types of presentations and training. This is information that we believe that everyone um, can talk about if they um, you know, know it. We want other people to be experts in their own communities and how to share this information. Um, We've seen this happen in some cities and de health departments as well Is that including U equals U requirements and RFPs or service standards um, has been a really great way to get it out there, um, especially in like marketing and outreach. Um, if there's specific requirements of how you're gonna talk about U equals U in those types of plans, it guarantees that they'll hopefully be included um, in those when they're going out to the public. Um, conducting forums of, for community members and organizations and policymakers and other stakeholders as well to hear their thoughts about U equals U and how it, it, it um, should or could work in their communities. Again, we know that this message can be shifted and changed depending on um, the you know, needs and, and the attitudes of the community and that's totally okay. And again, conducting those types of forums are great ways to solicit and get that feedback. Um, incorporating U equals U messaging into rapid start programs is also something that we've seen happen more and more. Um, we obviously know that rapid start programs lead to all sorts of improved outcomes later down the road as far as improved health outcomes, adherence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and including U equals U in that I think is obviously a, a perfect place for that to lie. Um, we've seen um, some health departments, such as like the New York State Health Department, um, issue dear colleague letters to um, folks across the state about U equals U. That's a great option um, if you have that network and, and uh, connections. Um, displaying posters and materials in waiting rooms and agencies. Again, if you need connection to resources or need any help developing those, please reach out to me and let me know. I'm happy to work with you on that. Um, we've seen some cities actually start to hire um, folks in their EHE plan specifically for a U equals U coordinator position or treatment navigators, which is great. There's lots of people that are prep navigators for how people helping folks navigate the, the prep ecosystem, but um, I think having a U equals U coordinator um, is an equally great idea. Um, we have also, as an organization, taken upon ourselves to launch um, a U equals U ambassador program um, where we can come in and, and provide um, training assistance um, or conduct a train the trainer program as well, where they just, the folks then go out into the community and help educate people. Social media campaigns as well, social marketing campaigns, um, making sure we're including and hiring local people living with HIV for, again, those campaigns is really important. 
um, including U equals U prominently in promotions for things like AIDS walks or Pride's event, Pride events or other, you know, large community events that in, there's some sort of natural tie-in. Um, I think AIDS walks are a perfect place to, to tie that in. Um, and we've seen that happen in a number of places. Um, the U, U equals U Maryland, the Baltimore City Health Department has a U equals U uh, newsletter that they put out every single month, which is a great way, again, to get the word out. Um, and also similar to what they did in Baltimore, they have their own U equals U specific website or landing page. Um, so that makes sure that that information is not buried, essentially. Um, engaging the media as well, um, telling personal stories about folks who learned this information, how it changed their lives, you know, all sorts of the impact of U equals U. I think they're compelling, um, compelling stories. Uh, engaging medical schools and colleges and organizations that serve youth, creating videos, people living with HIV to tell their stories, engaging um, diverse representation representatives of um, in all sorts of your decision making. I think for not even just for U equals U, but generally is always great advice. Um, and lastly, including U equals U messages and education in agency newsletters, fundraising appeals, etc. When sharing on social media, we always recommend that you use the hashtag U equals U often. Um, we, I follow that hashtag and check it probably 15 times a day on most social media. So if you post something with that hashtag, I will definitely see it and like it and probably share it as well. Um, so definitely encourage that. And, you know, we all the time are developing um, sample tweets and language for folks who are looking to share this information specifically around different, you know, HIV awareness days, whether it's National HIV Testing Day or World AIDS Day or Pride Month or all sorts of things. So if you need any help drafting those types of, letter, of tweets and language, please reach out to us and let us know. Um, and lastly, just reemphasizing some last takeaways here. Again, really important to train all your staff in the basic U equals U science and communications. Hopefully after this presentation today, you all will feel galvanized to be experts and go and share this information with other folks. Communicate this again, clearly, confidently, consistently, and consciously. Speak out if you see um, someone communicating it not in those ways, right? It's very often that you, that at least I see um, when HIV is discussed in mainstream media that they might get that risk assessment wrong. They might say it greatly reduces the risk of passing it on or, um, virtually impossible to transmit it, right? Which we know are harmful information. We need to make sure we're being accurate. So speak out, call that reporter if you have a relationship with them and say, hey, we need to change this to make sure it's accurate. Advocate um, with the U equals U public health message, again, to increase access and remove barriers to care. Um, we again think this is really critical to end the epidemic, but also to get more resources to people living with HIV to improve their health. Um, and then, of course, connect with, to the movement. Join as a community partner. Um, you can uh, go to our, our website to do that. Um, and of course, join us on social media and help share the information. And lastly, I'll end uh, with a video from AIDS 2018, where Dr. Allison Roger, who was the lead author of Partner 2, um, talked to Bruce Richmond, who was the founder of Prevention Access Campaign, about, um, about U equals U. Oh, it looks like we've got one more, and it has to come from U equals U himself. So. <laughs> Hi, Allison. Um, this is, uh, uh, today is marking a revolution in what it means to live with HIV, so thank you so much for your research. Um, I have a question on behalf of the U equals U campaign. There are many providers that are still not accepting this message. They try to focus on the risk is not zero scientifically, or they focus on their patients aren't going to be adherent and they won't know that they're detectable, or they say there's a rise of STIs already, so they don't want to share this with their patients. We get every single uh, kind of excuse. What would you say to clinicians or any other information provider who is withholding this information from people with HIV? Yeah. Um, and I, I just want to pay tribute to the U equals U campaign. It's been astonishing. Um, I, I think the time for excuses are over. I think it's very, very clear um, that the risk is zero. So I, I very much think we have to promote this. I think if you're on suppressive ART, you're sexually non-infectious and yeah, the time for excuses is over. And I Thank again you. pay tribute to you and your work. Thank you. Well said. Thank you, Alison. Great. Um, and on that note, um, thank you so much uh, for listening to me <laughs> talk at you for the past hour. I look forward to talk to joining with you all and actually having some conversation. 
um, next week um, slash today for you all. So um, again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me or any of us at Prevention Access Campaign anytime. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>